Greetings, my friends. Today, I have a treat for you. I have this DSI uh, 3600A frequency counter. This is from 1978, according to the circuit board in there. Uh, it's a pretty cool little piece of kit. And I just got this little piece of kit here. This is an ICO 330 solid state field effect transistor RF signal generator. I spent some time with it yesterday. Um, aside from this little knob here that controls the fine, um, it works great. Uh, the knob in there uses some ball bearings and stuff to, in theory, allow you to turn this more slowly uh, while making minor adjustments to the vernier, but it's really worn out. Uh, so I just uh, hot glued this thing to the plate. If I ever find another one of these knobs where I can replace it, I'll be able to get that back. But as it stands, it works pretty well. I've got it hooked up to this oscilloscope, and you can see that I can go through various frequencies. That's 200 kilohertz, or I can take it up to, uh, let's see, two, that's 5.4 megahertz. So I can go down to five or so megahertz. It does need to be calibrated. Uh, but it's pretty close, even uh, not having been used in many, many years. Uh, it has some modulation here. I can turn on an audio modulator. It's pretty cool. So once I got this thing set up and I could prove that it was working with this oscilloscope and I could see that it was working, uh, my next step was to try and get this frequency counter working. Unfortunately, the frequency counter is not working. Uh, it does not properly count. It's showing 16 here, but the uh, actual frequency is around Let's set it to 600. See, it's just not counting properly. Now it's at 1. It's at six, should be around 600 kilohertz. Uh, and even if I take it up to uh, 4.5 megahertz, still no changes on any of the settings, either the direct or the prescaled uh, version of this and any numbers that I do get up are coming out complete nonsense. This is an interesting um, little device. The, um, the I, I, I opened it up because the only owner's manual I could find for one of these online uh, was for a 3550A uh, and this is the 3600. The 3550 has an internal battery compartment. This one does not have a battery. It has a very, very small 2.5 millimeter uh, power jack on the back, but if we look inside here, if I could tip this up a bit, you can see that there's two uh, connectors in there where I can hook up uh, alligator clips to uh, power it with 9 volts and 300 milliamps according to the specs I was able to find. Uh, but because it has some kind of problems with the circuit board, uh, it isn't working properly, so I'm going to disassemble it, and I think I know what's going on. I'm pretty sure that that funky old capacitor in there has long since bit the dust. So I'm going to try replacing that first, and then we'll see if we can get this sucker back on its feet. So back. All right, my friends, I'm back, and I have discovered what I believe might be our big problem here. Uh, if we look carefully, we can see that we've got some burned out resistors here uh, coming in to the, uh, into the frequency counter. This one is burned, and this one is burned. Now, I know it didn't burn when I was doing this testing because I would have smelled that. So whatever happened here happened some time ago. I don't know exactly what. So the next step is going to be to pull the schematic and see what the, the uh, what am I trying to say? To see what the uh, power rating and the resistance of these resistors are. And I might pull this capacitor off and test it just to make sure it does still run at that particular value. This capacitor here may also need to be removed and replaced just for safety's sake. Because, you know, old electrolytics, they're not really to be trusted. But yeah, these resistors have got to get replaced first. And i got to figure out what their values are and put some new ones in there. So that will be what's coming up next. My guess is somebody tried to put something too high power into this, maybe trying to counter or do it, run the frequency counter on the output stage of a, uh, of a radio or something like that and blew it out. It's hard to say, but since they're both blown out, I'm not sure exactly what could have caused that, uh, but it definitely happened some time ago. So 
Uh, we'll take care of it and uh, see if we can get this sucker working again. Welcome back, my friends. So when last we spoke, we had a pair of resistors here that were having some problems, as in they were burned out. Uh, this being a DSi 3600A, I was unable to find a manual or a schematic for this specific model. I found the, um, the 5550 or the 3650, I believe, but it's a radically different design. However, luckily, the person who gave this to me had the manual. And so since he's far enough away that I couldn't easily get it, uh, he was close enough to uh, take a photograph of the schematic and send it to me. So I was able to determine that I needed to replace the burned out resistors with a 47 ohm and a 10 ohm resistor for the uh, uh, direct and uh, pre-scaled inputs, respectively. Uh, and so when I put it back together and hooked it up, lo and behold, it worked for the direct input. Worked great, actually. It was quite well uh, uh, in sync and so forth. And so I was very pleased. But then when I tried to use it on the pre-scaled input, I got nothing. Bupkis. So doing a little bit of poking around, it looks to me like there's a problem with this particular cable here. And so the next step is going to be to trace continuity for this. This using a 14-pin dip uh, socket connector here that goes to the board and then goes to this uh, uh, switch on the front but it's only using seven of the leads. So what I need to do is just run continuity on these. I get the impression from when I was looking at it that it seemed to be working a little bit, but only when the thing was in certain positions when I moved the wire around, and that tells me probably a bad wire, maybe a cold solder joint, something. Uh, so uh, I will definitely take a look at that and see what we can do. I did find something interesting though. Look here, this lead is on the board and it's from this old capacitor. Somebody soldered this whole thing together and it was clearly done by hand and then didn't trim this lead so i'm going to go ahead and take care of that while i'm in here too because you know we don't need that floating around so we'll be back with more in just a moment good morning my friends all right so it was getting into the early evening yesterday and i was still continuing to try and diagnose this thing and i was just so tired I could not handle it. I've been working a lot of uh, hours in my regular gig lately, so after a while I was like, I can't even remember what I was trying to do here. So I went to bed, and now it's in the morning and we're back at this. But before I went to bed, I took open, or I opened up this cover here on something called the Crystal Oven. Not sure why they call it that, but they keep this oscillator assembly separate. I just kind of wanted to make sure that it was working properly, and at least insofar as not having any blown components. Seems to be fine. Continuity seems good on all these wires. That was something I was concerned about. Uh, so the next step is going to be to start trying to diagnose what's going on coming in from this uh, thing here. And I was like, well, I have an oscilloscope and I have all this test equipment. I should have just started from first principles and just started following the signal and making sure that the signal is correct at the various stages of the circuit. So that's going to be the next step. And hopefully we will be able to identify what the issue is and uh, take care of it so we can get the prescaled input working properly. So be back as soon as I find some more information. All right, real quick, I just kind of wanted to show you that I am going to be going through the process I'm going through to determine what's going on. Now, knowing that the scaled side or the direct side works properly, that the direct input on this side of the frequency counter is working, and I can see I've got my uh, RF gen here uh, to my right set to 2.5 megahertz. It is generating 2.5 megahertz. That's about as accurate as I can get it with a vernier dial from the 60s. But it's close enough for what we're doing. So, you know, if I, if I stick my oscilloscope probe down here on the RF generator, you can see on the oscilloscope it's detecting a waveform of 2.5 megahertz. And it's distorting a little bit, as you can see, when the detector circuit goes on. And it's clear that we're having an effect, a slight effect on the circuit, or the circuit's having a slight effect on us one way or another. When the LED here goes on, it's causing the frequency to distort a little bit, but it is counting it accurately. It's 2.5 megahertz, bang on. So uh, then when I probe the other components in here all the way up the chain, we can see that it is still, if I can get this probe on there properly, 2.5 megahertz, and it's at varying signal levels, obviously as we do this, but the point is I was able to probe through most of the chain and determine, yeah, it's still 2.5 megahertz. So I know that side works. I'm gonna follow the same process on the other side and uh, see if I can identify a component that's failing. I'm guessing one of these capacitors has gone bad, but it's impossible to tell with these disk capacitors just by looking at them because they don't fail. Their failure mode isn't to explode or leak. So we'll take a look. 
All right, as suspected, we have found the culprit. This is the prescaled input. Everything is fine here and here, meaning the resistor is good, which I figured it was. But I get a good signal on this side of this capacitor and not on this side. And that implies to me that this little capacitor is dead. Um, you know, it might not be. Maybe there's something going on further down that's keeping it from drawing, but I don't think so. This is um, a 22 picofarad ceramic disc capacitor, and I've got plenty of those in a box over here, so I'm going to swap it out. But one thing I figured, I found out when I was doing this is that this 22 micro, microfarad uh, electrolytic, it's kind of old school, fairly large, you know, this circuit, by the way, says uh, right here, designed by... John Grube, 1978, made by DSI. So wherever you are, Mr. Grube, you did a good job. This thing is actually a pretty solid circuit. Can't blame you for old components going bad. So if Mr. Grube is around still, I offer him my hearty congratulations for a good design. Uh, however, I got to replace this. But as I was saying, this one here is, according to the schematic that I got, this should be a 0.5 microfarad capacitor and not a 22 microfarad capacitor or a 0.22 microfarads. So this one's actually, according to, I don't know, old capacitor designations are a little weird. This one says 0.22 microfarad, which, you know, and the big M, it's not millifarad. It's, that's an old way of, des of designating capacitors. The, I'm going to say this is probably a 22 microfarad electrolytic but I'm not going to mess with it because it seems to be working. The counter is working. If the scale, if the direct input wor stops working, I'll probably go to that first and put in a 0.5 microfarad um, electrolytic as my first go-to. Let's try and diagnose this kind of thing. But right now it's working and I'm a, a fan of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So whatever happened here, maybe somebody made a last minute component change or something. And so it varies from the schematic slightly. That did happen a lot. Um, when you had stuff, this is all hand soldered. This was before you could make stuff by automatic uh, machines and so forth. Uh, so this was put together by hand. Somebody probably put in a different capacitor for reasons. I don't know what those reasons are, but that's okay. I don't mind it being there as long as it works. This one, however, is not passing anything at all. And that means that it is dead or has failed in some mode uh, that we got to replace it. So that's going to be next. Going to desolder that, put in a new one, and we'll see where we are. All right, so after replacing the capacitor and running a few more tests, it seems like I've got the prescaled input working. Uh, one of the issues that I ran into is after I had done some of these adjustments, this ICO signal generator, just even though it's a, gr a really good one, even at its top range, it only gets to 70 megahertz. The prescaled input on this thing is actually intended for like really high values, 200, 300, 400 megahertz. And... Um, so I got up my nano VNA here and I set it to various values and started getting some readings. It only seems to properly read off of the nano VNA at about 275 to 300 megahertz. And my belief right now is that the prescaler is working, that it is actually reading accurately, as you can see, 275 megahertz, 275 megahertz. So it is working. Um, but I don't have a really good, clean signal source to test this thing with as a frequency counter uh, that can go to 300, 400. This thing, I believe, from what I can find, goes up to 600 megahertz, uh, which is amazing for a device of its age. But I'm only working on radios that go up to like 30 megahertz, and so I don't really need those extremely high values for what I'm doing. In the event that I manage to get my little my little uh, claws onto a uh, higher frequency range signal generator that'll go up into the multiple hundreds of megahertz, I'll run some more tests. And if I continue to find problems uh, with the accuracy or with just reading on this thing, I will more than happily go into it. There's a few things that I think might need to be looked at on that side of things, but as far as I can tell, the oscillator is working. The the it's in a they call it an oven this this box right here, and I think it is because um, looking into it, that the oscillator needs to be at a specific frequency to get extremely hyper accurate readings, which means after you have to turn it on and let it run just sitting for about 20 30 minutes until the oven gets to a stable temperature for the oscillator. Um, but you know, I'm not really that concerned about that at the moment. Uh, so for what I need this thing to do on direct input, going all the way up to 100 or 100 megahertz or so, I can easily make this thing work and put it to some really good use. So I'm looking forward to that. So this is your DSi 3600A uh, frequency counter. I'm going to put it back together. We'll do one more last look at it. Uh, and then uh, we'll conclude this video. And I thank you for following along. And I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. 
Welcome back, my friends. All right, I believe that we have this thing uh, in the state that we need it to be for the time being. I am uh, currently sending a 30 megahertz signal from my old ICO RF signal generator into this thing, and it's counting it pretty accurately. Um, I verified this uh, count with an oscilloscope. Actually, my signal generator is a little bit off. I need to calibrate the dial there a bit. I think that the dial just needs to be turned because it seems to be off consistently in all bands. So I don't need to do the full calibration procedure, thank goodness. And uh, the prescaled input is working. It takes a moment to generate the, uh, the value, but 275 megahertz, 275 megahertz. So. Uh, it's working, and I am pleased with that. And in theory, uh, there does still need to be some stuff done with the prescale input, but I'm less concerned about that at the moment because, honestly, what I really need this for is counting this kind of stuff. I did note something. It doesn't count very accurately above about 40 megahertz or so. Above that, it seems to kind of like lose its ability to figure out what's going on on the direct side. Uh, but, you know further analysis in the future, but for now, that is as much as I need it to be able to do correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it good for the time being. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is a DSi 3600A frequency counter, old school analog, made in 1978, working properly. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, and tune in next time. Leave a like, leave a, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, or uh, or don't, you know? whatever Whatever floats your boat. It's been a pleasure, my friends. I'll talk to you next time.